the party. Yeah, but it's for Shane. All the more reason. Look, I love Shane. She's amongst my three favorite cheese spies, but I have a lot of experience with surprise birthday parties, and they always turn out to be a disaster. So you're not going to help with the cake? I think that's an extremely unfair way of putting it. Accurate, though. Why not? What do you think? It's sort of a postmodernist thing. I can go pre-modernist. Yeah, you couldn't help, could you? Guys, guys, she's coming. Come on, come on. Lights. Lights. Oh, the candles. Cassie, help me with the candles. Three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. <laughs> The rapidly fluctuating rate of exchange with Japan and its effect on our current economic climate? A constitutional democracy that values the electoral college over the candidate with the most votes? Fake butter? Uh, sure, those are on everyone's list, but what I really hate is the way your body slows down when you get older. <sighs> Nothing quite works the way it used to. Tell me about it. There was a day when none of your friends were throwing a surprise party would have escaped serious injury. The Shane I used to know would have had more people than just Chet and Janet coughing up blood. I already apologized for last night. We've moved on to the part where you're supposed to comfort me and say things like, you're only one day older and age is just a state of mind. So is senility. And so is senility. Just playing. Okay, I realize I'm fishing for sympathy in the wrong pond. I still don't like the way my body's responding to being another year older. You're fine. So maybe a little birthday dinner tonight? I hate when she does that. Oh, we could go to Renzulli's. I hear they have a macaw that can sing happy birthday in 11 different languages. Not anymore. Last Wednesday, he passed out and died. Landed right on a man's kielbasa. That's so sad. I love kielbasa. Look, you guys, we don't have to go out. We don't have to do anything special. You've already made a big enough fuss. And now we'll make more. Come on, that's what birthdays are for. Yeah, we have to make a fuss. We have to celebrate. Why? What exactly are we celebrating? The fact that I'm one year closer to middle age and no closer at all to living the life I'd hoped I'd have? That sounds a little whiny for a beautiful 25-year-old international spy. It's just birthdays. They've never been good for me. Even when I was a kid, I could never quite understand why I was supposed to be having a good time. Didn't your parents have all those amazing parties with the tents and the circus animals and hundreds of people? Yeah, it's for the other parents. It's kind of like competition. For me, it was always about what wasn't there. No friends, no brothers, no sisters, no one who liked me more than the circus tents. It's kind of funny when you're rich, you get everything except for what you want. Tell you what, why don't we just stay here tonight, order a pizza, bake a cake, and just talk. No fuss, no big deal, and the phone goes off the hook so Jack can interrupt us with a job. Uh. Hi. I hope I'm not interrupting. No, no, come in. Thank you. I am... Um, I'm sure you all remember Agent Kimberly. Well, of course we do. He's a nice agent who tried to cancel this program and send us all back to prison. I believe that hard work and dedication to this nation's ideals are what earn a man or woman the right to serve their country. I do not believe that we are in the business of rewarding incorrigibles who have broken the law with a house, a paycheck, and a government job. Wow. All those words are not a single breath. Is it true what you can tell about a man by the length of the sentences? And immediately to his left is Beth Wright, recently promoted field agent, now assisting Agent Kimbrell. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Agent Kimbrell is here to tell us all about a case he's been very close to for some time. I'm sure we'll all benefit from hearing the details straight from the horse's mouth. Wrong end. 
Enlisting your help was not my idea. Apparently, you've had some recent success, and the chairman wanted me to bring you on board. They're trying to track down an assassin called the Iceman. He's a cold and calculating murderer whose victims usually are national and international government-based figures. We've gotten word that he may strike again in 72 hours. He's never been ID'd. No one knows what he looks like. What we do know is that the money he receives for his hits is laundered through, of all places, the comedy club owned by this man, Edwin Malloy. They've been in business together for years, but we've never been able to prove anything. Uh, tell them about the informant. I will. This is Herb Meyer. He was an accountant for the comedy club, recently came across some information that would help identify the Iceman and his next victim. But he disappeared two days ago before he could tell us what he knew. Against my every instinct, we are sending you in undercover to help find him and stop the Iceman before he strikes again. Any questions? Yes, are you naturally this charming or did you learn that in finishing school? Jack, can we talk to you for a second? I don't care how important this assignment is, we are not working for that man, period. Actually, you are working for that man, comma, because if you refuse, the chairman has given him permission to send you all back to jail. We can't wait to get started. Cassie, now that Herb disappeared, there's an opening for an accountant inside Malloy's comedy club. Get the job, see what you can find. Any plans tonight, little king? Staying on the Graceland, man. Oh, yeah? I'm feeling a bit under the weather. No. My doctors think it might be dry right. That's the funny part, little darling. Any man with his hand in my pants ought to at least laugh at my jokes. Thank you very much. 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 Hey, King, take a powder. It's great. Thank you very much. We appreciate you letting us rehearse here before the show tonight, Mr. Malloy. I had to be here anyway. I'm, uh, I'm supposed to meet some broad who wants to be my new accountant. There's nothing hotter than a female accountant. Hello, boys. Woody, you fellas look like you need your numbers crunched. Uh, I'm uh, Malloy. You're the accountant. Only the baddest bean counter this side of the Bank of America. Only the ballsiest bookkeeper you've ever laid. Eyes on. You boys read the papers? Wimpy accountants are passe. We've stripped off the black horn-rimmed glasses and strapped on the black masks. We're the new outlaws, Mr. Malloy. The only question is, are you ready? I was too evil for Enron. Too wicked for WorldCom. I'll capitalize your expenses like no one's ever done. I split your stock and cut your debt and loot your pension fund. Don't care about your religion. You can pray to God or Buddha. As long as your awful partnerships are all based in Bermuda. I'm a CPA. That's spelled C. P A child CPA Anderson Deloitte Tooch even the SEC Just frame my name on your bottom line they'll never audit me Don't look too close just shut your eyes make sure to close the door My slide rule make it down Jones rise your cash is gonna flow I'm a CPA That spelled C P H-I-L-C-P-A. So when can you start? Dee Dee, I've gotten you a job as a dental hygienist. For some reason, Herb was visiting his dentist a couple of times every week before he disappeared, and it was the last place he was seen. We need you to find out why. Hi. Hi, I'm Dee Dee. Oh, you must be here for your appointment, so you, you can go before me because, you know, I, I, you, you can go, because I'm, I'm early. I'm, like, way early. I'm not supposed to be here until next week. Actually, next month, you know, and my teeth are really good. Uh, Ready? She, she's here for her appointment, and I volunteered for her to go first because, you know, the type of guy I am, you know, because Ready? Uh, my Open. teeth are... Uh, Close. Oh. Where? What a noise, huh? I think it's the scariest part about going to the dentist. It always made me think he was doing something worse than he really was. It's soothing. Well, sure, or you could look at it that way. So, anyway, I just want to thank you for showing me the ropes. Or should I say the floss? <laughs> I'm looking forward to learning everything. Which patients need what care and who comes by regularly. So, anyway, uh, maybe you and I could get lunch later, chat about, you know, teeth. I don't eat lunch and I don't chat. Maybe it's all these years as a dentist, but I prefer to keep my mouth closed.
Now, open again, Mr. Walshman. There we go. Time to pick three years of hardened plaque off those bleeding gums. Shane, when you get to Malloy's apartment, I just want you looking into his file, seeing if there's anything that might point to the Iceman's identity. No little trinkets or keepsakes for yourself. I am doing this on my birthday. Yeah, I don't care. No gifts. Look, can't afford the Iceman knowing we're looking for him, so be careful. You know, there's no telling what kind of a system Malloy's got set up. Mm, looks like the kind you shut off with almost no effort at all. Oh, sorry. Unless, of course... What's that? It's just a motion detector. I have 20 seconds to shut it off. It's already detected you. How can you shut it off? I just have to put a heat source under it. The heat will confuse the infrared sensor and reset it. It stopped. Did it stop? Just tell me it stopped. You relax. I had a harder time getting into this outfit tonight. Unless, of course... It stopped. Didn't it stop? You told me it stopped. Across the apartment, about knee-high, super-thin filament tripwire. Found the file on Herb Jack, a thick one. I'm bringing it back. Unless, of course. Ahoy, it's Malloy at 555-0165. Leave a message. In two seconds, I'm gonna come after your family. So, little king, what's going through your mind right now? Turnites, you think all that sawdust at your feet is dandruff? I say we go with the blue material. Oh, man. So, uh, here it is, uh, all the books. So you have a seat and uh, let's see what you can cook up. Honey, when it comes to cooking books, I'm a regular Wolfgang Puck. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't follow hockey. Just save me money. What are you doing? Uh, it's all on the computer. Right. Mm, I knew that. Excuse me, Mr. Malloy. We gotta follow that little Richard ventriloquist tonight. That sucks grits through a straw, man. This whole job sucks grits through a straw. Dance. Excuse me for just a moment, Mr. Stucky. Close your mouth on this, please. Cassie. Kimball was wrong. Everything is on the computer. Oh, Herb must have put it in an encrypted file. We'll have to crack it. Okay, go to the registry editor and find the key code. Go to the who's in find the what? Click on the start button. Okay. Click run. run. Now type R E. Hold it. Illegal operation. Since when did these things get attitude? Well, that's just a technical term. Hit OK. Okay. okay. Mm. Internal server error. Type mm. fatal. Message null. Description Java Lang null. Mm. Null pointer exception. Well, duh. <laughs> what color's the screen? Blue? More cobaltish, really. So it's bluish. Funny, it doesn't look bluish. Just a little humor. I'm trying to light things up. Here. Hit Alt, Control, F1. What comes up? Bingo. Encrypted files. Oh, I'm good. There's nothing in it. You must have erased it. That's great. Great? That's great. It proves that Herb is trying to hide something. I'm calling old fashioned, but great usually refers to finding what you're looking for before it gets erased. Work with me, Cassie. It's my job to find the silver line. Got it. Go. So, what have you got? Well, <clears throat> if we amortize using the parsimony clause and tangibilize the intangible evidence, we should be able to divest the debt, depreciate the debit, and diversify the delinquent development. In English. I get paid by the word. Whew. So, Herb and the dentist are a couple. Well, I kept a file on everyone who worked at the club. 
You even had a picture of those two, you know. Having sex. Cheating at bridge. Front is true, Jack. Sorry. I thought... What, the two people in our relationship can't win perfectly innocent ways of enjoying themselves? That's not what I'm saying. I just... So, Dee Dee, that explains why Herbert's at the dentist so much. So if Alicia's his girlfriend, she's got to know where he is. Oh, and what, you want me to get her to talk? It's impossible. She won't tell me anything. Hi, how you doing? I can't take it anymore. The pressure, the secrecy, Herb always wanting more. He's so needy. He's so insecure. How are you feeling, honey? Do you really love me, honey? Hey, could I come over and hide out your place so the whole thing blows over, honey? I have had enough. I wish somebody from law enforcement would just come over to my place and take him into protective custody. All right, I'm outside Alicia's house. Okay, what do you see? It's a lovely two-bedroom, two-bath, Jack, with high ceilings and wood floors throughout. This light and bright California Spanish fixer also has picture windows overlooking a wonderful splash of bougainvillea and can be yours today if you act fast. Ah, uh, yes, yet another unprovoked and unwarranted moment of sarcasm from the birthday girl. All right, I just got a visual. completely and totally incompetent. The three of you had no business being anywhere near a case like this. Hey, to yawn and run. I am not finished. Though that is the type of manners and respect I should come to expect from a person who spent their adult life in prison. Hey. Hey is for horses, Missy. This is an unmitigated disaster. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You had the informant in your hand, and you let him go? She, she saved his life. life. Having him alive does me no good if I don't have him here. I'm guessing he'd disagree. Look, maybe we should all just take a minute. Calm down. I will not calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. We had 48 hours. Now let's take a look at what our little experiment has gotten us. This one broke into Malloy's computer and found nothing that can help us. This one broke into Malloy's apartment and found nothing that can help us. This one got a job at a dentist and found... Three very decayed bicuspids. It's not every day the federal government saves a man's mouth. Absolutely nothing that can help us. I will say it again. You are ineffectual screw-ups. You have no business being on the street, let alone enforcing the law. Excuse me. Oh, good. Let's hear from Mr. I took free career criminals out of prison and gave them a job handling sophisticated criminal technologies because they look good in slacks. First of all, who says slacks? And second of all, who had five years to catch the Iceman, came up with nothing, lost the informant in the first place, came crawling to us for help, and started whining like a baby the minute something went wrong? Sometimes I say slacks. Excuse How me? How dare you impugn my record? I have 14 distinguished years of service with the department, and I will not be talked to like that by a common thief. Excuse me! There is nothing common about her. In fact, there's nothing common about any of them. They are incredibly uncommon, and I am proud and honored to be working with them every single day. You know, I also have a number of years of distinguished service within the department. And if you don't start behaving like a professional, if you don't start accepting the fact that they're actually very good at what they do, I might still be able to help you. If you don't stop insulting my agents, insulting my friends, you're gonna have me to deal with. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Okay, now that we have had a chance to vent our various frustrations, we're all on the same team. Maybe it's time we come up with some constructive solutions. How's this for constructive? Those hedge trimmers were at Alicia's house before I got there. How'd they know where he was? Malloy had the files. Maybe he figured it out. Why only now? What she's saying is, what if someone from our side is working with them? What is that supposed to mean? You think someone in the department is leaking information? Well, who else knew where Shane was going? That's absurd. No one leaks in my office. Ooh, tough rules. Change it. Agent Kimbrell, they might have a point. Maybe we should check around. There is a hitman on the loose. Someone is about to be murdered. I am not wasting time making talented agents take a lie detector test on the recommendation of three convicted felons. All right. We're on the same team. Fine. But I'm the coach. It's the fourth quarter. And unless you want to get traded back to the prison team, you best find a way to win. Thanks, Jack. 
That was really cool. Thanks. Now, of course, we're going to have to do what he said. I'm guessing Herb kept backup files. If we can't find him, maybe we can find the files. And if anyone besides Herb would know where they are, it'd be Alicia. I'll get her to open up again. Maybe she can lead us to them. I have absolutely nothing to say. I just want to get my lips in on this. So Malloy has a hidden room under the stage? Uh, yeah, according to Alicia, where Herb kept handwritten backup files. Looks like he and I have something in common. An inborn and almost pathological need for deception. OK, two things. He also hates computers. Voila. Door and the floor. What is it? Did you find Herb? Only if he's on that new no-carbs diet. Looks like Malloy keeps this as a store over comedy props. And to hold the occasional devil worship meeting. Could we just find the files and get out of here? Yeah, no problem. Money laundering files are usually right next to the rubber bonnet. Oh. They're getting too close. It's time to call the Iceman. It's hard to find good accountants nowadays. I began to suspect you were less than advertised when you didn't seem very comfortable around the computer. Yeah, like you understand Windows XP. <laughs> a sense of humor, that's good. It's a pity more people don't have one. I'd be a rich man. Clubs like this are barely making it anymore. So when the, a chance came along to make a little extra income on the side, I jumped at it. <laughs> That's your excuse to launder money for a killer? It's important for small businesses to diversify. Besides, I'm helping the economy. If this place goes out of business, two more American workers lose gainful employment and go on the dole. Geez, with all the rampant crime these days, you think there'd be plenty of places for an ex-goon to submit his resume. You two been goons long? You with the goons union? Do you prefer goon or thug? Tough room. I guess they're more partial to character humor. It's not too late, Mr. Malloy. Free us now, turn state's evidence, and I promise they will cut you a deal. Yes. Yes, they probably would cut me a deal. But the Iceman would cut me every other way. And what the heck? I'm kind of getting used to a little extra cash at the end of the month. <laughs> Boys. Every night, some poor sap dies up on that stage. This will be the first time someone dies underneath it. <laughs> Tough room. <clears throat> it's Malloy. I've got uh, three agents that need to be taken care of. They're trying to follow the money to you. Lizzie, what do you mean you're busy? You're not half as busy as you'll be if they get out of here. No, no, I am not going to do it. You're the killer. All right, 30 minutes. They'll be here, and I will be having my weekly back wax and pedicure. That was headquarters. I have some business I have to take care of. Agent Wright, let's go. Oh, Jack, you might want to take a picture of this. It's what agents look like when they actually go do something. Just because I haven't checked in since the dentist's office does not mean that. Beth, I think I'll just talk to you from now on. Oh. You won't have to worry about that. Since you're off the case, you won't have to talk to either of us. I uh, guess we're going. I hope nothing's happened to them. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cassie Shane Didi, come in. Are you there? Come in. Cassie Shane Didi, come in. Are you there? Come in. I'm getting the chest. Hey. Cassie Shane Didi. Didi Cassie Shane. Any order. Doesn't matter. Hello? Oh, the Iceman cometh and soon. In less than 30 minutes. These ropes are too thick. OK, everyone, let's just stop, settle down, and think about the situation. OK, this is no time to panic. OK. OK, okay it's perfect time. OK, look, guys, Jack's going to find us, OK? Yeah, Jack will find us. It's yeah. a good thing, too, because, you know, we have your, uh, your birthday dinner tonight. Right? We still have the noisemaker and those pointy little hats. You know what the worst part is? It's just realizing, knowing that I didn't meet a guy on this case either. <laughs> that, I didn't, that I didn't leave something behind. That I didn't add anything instead of just. I mean, what have I done? What have I really done all my life? Except take. As a kid, I resented the rich thing, but I still took everything that was handed to me. Till I was old enough to take it on my own. 
<laughs> All my life, I've taken and grabbed and stolen. It's not the kind of thing somebody points to and said, you know, it was good to have her around because... Because... Feel free to jump in any time here. Say something. Uh, seltzer water. I was thinking more along the vein of, don't worry, Shane, we all have those thoughts. No, seltzer water there! Uh, deeds, I'm all for laughing in the face of death, but I'm really not in the mood to get a face full of seltzer No, water. these ropes are very thick. If we can spray it with seltzer, the CO2 from the water will actually expand the fibers and loosen the ropes. that whole seltzer water thing to play off the theme of us being trapped in a comedy club. I uh, know. Of course not. No! Oh, hold them off. You find her spot. Great. You get to hurt people. I have to use my brain. Hey, get out of prison. I'm a spy. Rummage through files. Come on, Cassie. Find something. Deeds, what was the name of that file again? Oh. I think it's IM2001. Yeah. Here's a file with that name. I've got an arrow pointing to King's Crown. King's Crown? Look at that name. Does Herb know it's King? He works in a nightclub and probably knows some queens. I can fight and I'm funny. King. Come on, buddy. It's now or never. It's now or never. The Elvis impersonator. He's called the King, but Clown. He doesn't wear a crown. Does he have one? Where would he keep it in his house? <laughs> Alicia's a dead to death for her. How do you keep money laundering files in someone's tooth? I've got it. The records are in a crown in the Elvis impersonator's teeth. In a microchip. Cassie, that's amazing. How'd you figure out it was a microchip? It says microchip on the bottom of the page. Oh, come on. What? Look, his handwriting is really hard to read. I can't believe you're going to take a microchip out of a man's tooth. Did you really go to dental school? Yeah. Well, I guess it's kind of hard to believe that a handsome, dashing government spy like me did something so, you know, ordinary and boring. No, not really. So anyway, did you ever actually do any dental work? Uh, well, there were classes and books, and uh, we used to practice on little rubber mouths, which is good, you know, because that way I wouldn't have to touch anything that might be infected. This should go well. Excuse me, darling, you're a pretty little filly, but I still understand what we're doing here after hours. I apologize to the dummy, ma'am. Little did empty upstairs, you know what I mean? It's perfectly simple, King. Cafe Ha Hollywood has a quid pro quo with the HMO, so you pay no dough, and you know when you go, your teeth will glow for tonight's big show. Once more time, it's low. No cash flow, keep costs low, teeth clean so, and press front row. Whoa. Have a seat right over here. Hey, what about the lift, King? Well, we'll just give him a special seat over there. Uh-uh, honey. Little Elvis always stays right by my side. Now, I want my own saliva thingy. Oh. Yeah. Now, let's just take a look. Beef and broccoli, chow mein chicken. Here's a small bottle of peanut butter. Uh-huh. Prepare the gas. Preparing the gas. <coughs> just, just don't be cruel. Drill me tender. Okay. Now, count backwards from 100. Uh, 100, 99, 50, 12. Elvis has left the building. Okay, back here somewhere. Almost there. Ah, here we go. One slightly moist microchip. <sighs> oh, there you go. Well, well, well. <laughs> I didn't think you could do it. What are you doing here? It was Agent Wright's idea. She had faith that you'd come up with something and monitored your every move. Our every move? What's that for? They were right. There's a leak in the department. <laughs> oh, the Iceman. I'll take that. It's been handy killing government people while actually working for the government. It's kept me quite close to my targets. I'm sorry. This must have been the way she said it. Anyway, I got myself assigned to the case so I could find Herb. I didn't know how much he knew or who he had told. <laughs> it's 
true. In retrospect, it doesn't seem that funny. You might want to take this a bit more seriously. I do plan on killing everyone in this room. <laughs> I'm sorry. I failed to see anything amusing about what's happening here. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? I'm a trained assassin who's aiming a gun at you. You're all about to die. <laughs> I'm warning you, this is no laughing matter. Wait a minute now. Murder may be one big joke to all of you, but not to me and the little king. It's <laughs> <laughs> nitrous oxide. <laughs> laughing gas. <laughs> somebody, somebody turns it off. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> Everyone move away and no funny stuff. <laughs> I'll just break the valve and lock you in and the gas will kill you, and there'll be no evidence I was ever here. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's horrible. All the laughter will, will restrict the esophagus and choke off all the air until we suffocate. It's a long, horrible, ugly way to die. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> means it's over. <laughs> I've killed dozens of people. I'll probably get the chair. Oh, the chair. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you people now? <laughs> Ow! anything she said not meaning a word of it <laughs> just a little something to perk up your love life we all know how hard it is finding a man these days so do me it's someone we usually end up kicking him through a window or smashing his head into a light pole we thought he would come in handy <gasps> oh my god <laughs> how did you know he's the perfect guy he doesn't talk he doesn't cheat he doesn't drink a six-pack and ram his tractor lawnmower through your patio door when you stop putting out what just a Top of the head example. Oh, and he's guaranteed not to get emotionally attached. Also, he's anatomically incorrect. He's even anatomically complete. So you're guaranteed not to get attached to him. Oh, oh God, it's scary. He's actually cute. And he's very discreet. Squeeze his tummy. Hello, we're just good friends. Oh. <laughs> we're just good friends. Hi. Hope I'm not interrupting anything strange and unexplainable. No, 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 come oh. in. Just a little birthday fun. Oh. Well, I just wanted to stop by and let you know that Malloy's been picked up and put in jail. Uh, Kimbrell is begrudgingly grateful to all of you for solving his case, and Herb and Alicia are safely back in each other's arms. Nice wrap-up, Jack. Perfectly thrown away with just the right amount of weight to make us care. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I also stopped by because I have, well, something I want to give you for your birthday. <gasps> really? This is Agent Brian Teitelbaum his family. I just thought anyone who might be wondering, I don't know, her life is having the kind of meaning she wants it to have, if she's making up at all for her past, if she's giving anything. I thought she might like to know that this is the guy the Iceman was going to kill. And because she stopped it from happening, he now has a chance to live a long and happy life with his wife and kids. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So I don't feel quite so bad about birthdays anymore. You guys almost make getting older fun. Mmm, birthday picture. Oh. Okay. Ready? Mickey's.
Thanks, Chad. Just pass it around. Okay. Brussels sprouts are taking forever. Cassie, help Jack with the frosting. Are we okay on wine? People, I need answers. We're good. Dip! Dip! For God's sake, dip! Oh, here you go. Jack, your lifesaver. Cassie, frosting, help. Cassie! She has to be here any minute. I told you, I am not a party to this party. Yeah, but it's for Shane. All the more reason. Look, I love Shane. She's amongst my three favorite cheese spies, but I have a lot of experience with surprise birthday parties, and they always turn out to be a disaster. So, you're not gonna help with the cake? I think that's an extremely unfair way of putting it. Accurate, though. Voila. What do you think? <sighs> it's sort of a postmodernist thing. I can go pre-modernist. Cassie, help me with the candles. Shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. fluctuating rate of exchange with Japan and its effect on our current economic climate? A constitutional democracy that values the electoral college over the candidate with the most votes? Fake butter. Uh, sure, those are on everyone's list, but what I really hate is the way your body slows down when you get older. <sighs> Nothing quite works the way it used to. Tell me about it. There was a day when none of your friends were throwing a surprise party would have escaped serious injury. The Shane I used to know would have had more people than just Chet and Janet coughing up blood. I already apologized for last night. We've moved on to the part where you're supposed to comfort me and say things like, you're only one day older and age is just a state of mind. So is senility. And so is senility. Just playing. Okay, I realize I'm fishing for sympathy in the wrong pond. I still don't like the way my body's responding to being another year older. You're fine. So maybe a little birthday dinner tonight? I hate when she does that. Oh, we could go to Renzulli's. I hear they have Macaw that can sing happy birthday in 11 different languages. Not anymore. Last Wednesday, he passed out and died. Landed right on a man's kielbasa. That's so sad. I love kielbasa. Look, you guys, we don't have to go out. We don't have to do anything special. You've already made a big enough fuss. And now we'll make more. Come on, that's what birthdays are for. Yeah, we have to make a fuss. We have to celebrate. Why? What exactly are we celebrating? The fact that I'm one year closer to middle age and no closer at all to living the life I'd hoped I'd have? That sounds a little whiny for a beautiful 25-year-old international spy. It's just birthdays. They've never been good for me. Even when I was a kid, I could never quite understand why I was supposed to be having a good time. Didn't your parents have all those amazing parties with the tents and the circus animals and hundreds of people? Yeah, it's for the other parents. It's kind of like competition. For me, it was always about what wasn't there. No friends, no brothers, no sisters, no one who liked me more than the circus tents. It's kind of funny when you're rich, you get everything except for what you want. Tell you what, why don't we just stay here tonight, order a pizza, bake a cake, and just talk. No fuss, no big deal, and the phone goes off the hook so Jack can interrupt us with a job. Uh -huh. Hi. I hope I'm not interrupting. No, no, come in. Thank you. I am... Um, I'm sure you all remember Agent Kimbrell. Well, of course we do. He's a nice agent who tried to cancel this program and send us all back to prison. I believe that hard work and dedication to this nation's ideals are what earn a man or woman the right to serve their country. I do not believe that we are in the business of rewarding incorrigibles who have broken a law with a house, a paycheck, and a government job. 
Wow. All those words and not a single breath. Is it true what you can tell about a man by the length of the sentences? And immediately to his left is Beth Wright, recently promoted field agent, now assisting Agent Kimbrell. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Agent Kimbrell is here to tell us all about a case he's been very close to for some time. I'm sure we'll all benefit from hearing the details straight from the horse's mouth. Wrong end. Enlisting your help was not my idea. Apparently, you've had some recent success, and the chairman wanted me to bring you on board. They're trying to track down an assassin called the Iceman. He's a cold and calculating murderer whose victims usually are national and international government-based figures. We've gotten word that he may strike again in 72 hours. He's never been ID'd. No one knows what he looks like. What we do know is that the money he receives for his hits is laundered through, of all places, a comedy club owned by this man, Edwin Malloy. They've been in business together for years, but we've never been able to prove anything. Uh, tell them about the informant. I will. This is Herb Meyer. He was an accountant for the comedy club, recently came across some information that would help identify the Iceman and his next victim. But he disappeared two days ago before he could tell us what he knew. Against my every instinct, we are sending you in undercover to help find him and stop the Iceman before he strikes again. Any questions? Yes, are you naturally this charming or did you learn that in finishing school? Jack, can we talk to you for a second? I don't care how important this assignment is, we are not working for that man, period. Actually, you are working for that man, comma, because if you refuse, the chairman has given him permission to send you all back to jail. We can't wait to get started. Cassie, now that Herb disappeared, there's a...